The Pax Romana of the United Nations is an international association of Catholic professionals and intellectuals working for the UN or being closely associated with its work. An open forum for diplomats, international civil servants, or representatives of non-governmental organizations sharing a commitment based on a Christian vision and mission. The Pacem Interis is a papal encyclical issued by Pope John XXIII on the 11th of April, 1963. It was the last encyclical drafted by the blessed John XXIII, who died two months after its completion. It is the first encyclical that the Pope did not address to the Catholic faithful only, but also to all men of goodwill. In this work, John XXIII reacted to the then political situation in the middle of the Cold War. The peace encyclical was issued only two years after the erection of the Berlin Wall and only a few months after the Cuban Missile Crisis, a situation that became perilously close to a nuclear disaster. The Pope explains in this encyclical that conflicts should not be resolved by recourse to arms but rather by negotiation. He further emphasizes the importance of respect of human rights as an essential consequence of the Christian understanding of men. The Pope clearly establishes that every man has the right to life, to bodily integrity, and to the means which are suitable for the proper development of life. Fifty years later, the vision offered by Pope John still has much to teach us as we struggle to face the new challenges for peace and justice in the post-Cold War era amid the continuing proliferation of armaments. Pope John's encyclical was and is a powerful summons to engage that creative dialogue between the church and the world, between believers and non-believers, which Vatican Council II set out to promote. It offers a thoroughly Christian vision of man's place in the cosmos, confident that in doing so, it is holding out a message of hope to a world that is hungry for it, a message that can resonate with people of all beliefs and none, because its truth is accessible to all. Historic wrongs and injustices can only be overcome if men and women are inspired by a message of healing and hope, a message that offers a way forward out of the impasse that so often locks people and nations into a vicious circle of violence. Since 1963, some of the conflicts that seemed insoluble at the time have passed into history. Let us take heart then as we struggle for peace and justice in the world today, confident that our common pursuit of the divinely established order of a world where the dignity of every human person is accorded the respect that is due can and will bear fruit. Here at the United Nations on October 24th, 2012, we heard from a number of knowledgeable thinkers in our symposium on the encyclical Pacem in Teres, its 50th anniversary and its relevancy to the 21st century. The openness of the church to the modern world and its desire to respond to the signs of the times are reflected in Pacham in theories, particularly in considering science and technology as catalysts for bringing together people and nations in relationships of economic, cultural, and social dimensions referred to in the encyclical as socialization. The novelty of Blessed John XXIII's approach in Pachamin Theories then is that the Pope was able in the circumstances of the times to bring to bear his own rich experiences in international affairs by pronouncing for the first time in papal teaching on the development of an international juridical reality and expressly to name in this regard the recent establishment of the United Nations Organization. I must say this is a remarkable gathering in the commemoration of an amazing document, the encyclical Pochum in Terrace. The fact that states throughout the world feel obliged to honor the idea of human rights 
shows how powerful are the tools of moral conviction and spiritual integrity, which proved so decisive in the revolution of conscience that made possible the 1989 nonviolent revolution that displaced European totalitarianism and communism. And although distorted notions of freedom as license continues to threaten democracy and free societies, it is surely significant that in many years since Pachim Terrace, much of the world has become more free. Structures of dialogue and cooperation between nations have been strengthened, and the threat of a global nuclear war, which weighed so heavily on Pope John XXIII, has been somewhat contained. The philosophical side of John's vision in Pachamenteris is simple, ancient, and profound. He recognizes the emerging global era as a new and exciting stage in the human journey. He then celebrates for this new age three especially important signs of the times. First, the emancipation of workers. Second, the emancipation of women. And third, the emancipation of once colonized peoples. His encyclical follows a simple outline based on this vision. After a brief introduction on the, on the order of the universe and on the order among human beings, all reflecting divine order, he addresses four concentric circles of human order. First, the order among human beings as individuals with emphasis on human rights. Second, the order between individuals and public authorities with emphasis on the public authorities' responsibility for the common good. And third, the order among states again oriented to the common good, and now especially to disarmament and to true economic development. Fourth, and ultimately, the order of political communities within the global community, which is its central focus. In Pachamentaris, Blessed Pope John Paul XXIII made human rights the centerpiece of his encyclical devoted to peace. The central message is that peace is possible only if and when the rights of every human being are addressed. These human rights are universal, inviolable, and inalienable. Every human being is endowed with these rights by virtue of her or his personhood and as an aspect of that person's dignity. Nicholas Kristof, one of the preeminent political commentators of today, noted that in the 19th century, the paramount moral challenge to society was slavery. In the 20th century, it was totalitarianism. In this century, he said, it is the brutality inflicted on so many women and girls around the globe through human rights abuses. Many people, he says, think that the laws that govern man's relations with the state are the same as those which regulate the blind elemental forces of the universe. On the contrary, says John, politics and economics must observe those divine laws which clearly indicates how a man must behave towards his fellows in society. If Pope John could return to earth today, what would he think of our present situation? He would be glad to see that we have moved away from the Cold War confrontation, cut back our nuclear arsenals, and moved a little closer to recognizing the supremacy of international law. But he would surely be sadly disappointed with our economic behavior. When he wrote Pacho in Terris, we had economies in which one could generally find a job without undue difficulties, in which democracies were not constantly at the mercy of speculative markets, in which we were not plagued by excessive competitive stresses. Since then, we have achieved substantial economic growth but that has mainly benefited a very few at the top. Catholic social economic teaching provides many insights and guidelines 
steer us away from the grave errors of libertarian capitalism. Hudson Terrace teaches that the stockpiles which exist in various countries should be reduced equally and simultaneously by the parties concerned, that nuclear weapons should be banned, and finally that all come to an agreement on a fitting program of disarmament employing mutual and effective controls. These teachings about the global common good remain entirely relevant for the ongoing efforts of the United Nations in its first committee, meeting here as we speak. Hatsum and Terrace can be understood as a prophetic document, a teaching aimed at energizing not only Catholics, but per persons of all faith persuasions, or none at all, to work with great determination to make the word dif world different. I think that as we skate on the edge of the abyss, the prof prophetic is also the prudent. Thus, the church at all levels might prudently take up afresh the teachings in Pachin and Terrace and bring its moral influence to bear on all governments to make the work of disarmament the preeminent task.